Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about formulas involving polygons. All right, so remember a polygon is a many sided figure. Let's take a look at our first theorem, theorem number 53. The sum of the measures of the angles of a polygon with n sides is given by the formula n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So, how do we figure that out just kind of by showing you why that's true. We know that the sum of the measures of a triangle has three sides is going to be 180 degrees. So 3 minus 2 times 180, we know that the sum of the measures of the angles is 180 degrees, three sides. In this case, I have four sides. I'm going to use what we know about triangles to show you why the sum of the measures of a square rectangle or a quadrilateral is going to be 360 degrees. And I know that because if I draw a line here to separate the square into two triangles, now I have two triangles, each with uh, measures of all their angles equaling 180 degrees. So 2 times 180 is going to be 360 degrees. Here I have a pentagon. So again, I'm going to create, uh, I know it looks bad. I'm going to create three triangles here. So first I had one triangle, now two triangles, now three triangles, each one with 180 degrees to them. So the sum of the measures of my pentagon, 540 degrees. The same fashion, I have my hexagon, and I'm going to draw my triangles here. There's one, there's two, there's three and four. So I have four triangles. I went from one to two to three to four. So you can see that as I add a side, I'm adding a triangle. So in this case, the sum of the measure is going to be 720. So 6 minus 2, which is 4 times 180, is going to be 720. So this formula results from the fact that we can create in a polygon a series of triangles depending on the number of sides that we have. The number of triangles is equal to, in a polygon, n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. All right, let's talk about theorem 56. So it looks like we're jumping around a little bit on the theorems. Uh, so theorem 56, uh, actually, actually it should be theorem, well, I don't know what theorem it is. It doesn't really matter. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a polygon is equal to 360 degrees. So theorem numbers are irrelevant. They're just based on whatever textbook we're looking at. So for you who are listening on YouTube, it doesn't really matter what the number is. Right, the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a polygon is equal to 360 degrees. Right, so how do we get that? Well, I know that the sum of the measures of the interior angles is equal to n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So n minus 2 times 180 degrees. And I know the sum of the measures of the interior and exterior angles is n times 180, right? Because if I have an interior and exterior angle, by definition, interior and exterior angles are supplementary. So angles 1 plus 6 equal 180, 2 plus 7 equal 180, 3 plus 8 equal 180 degrees, 4 plus 9 equal 180 degrees, 5 plus 10 equal 180 degrees. So if I take this example, I know that the measures of angles 1 through 10, I have five different pairs of exterior and interior angles. So measures of angles 1 through 10 equals 5 times 180 degrees. Now the measure of angle 1 through 5 is going to be 3 times 180, or n minus 2 times 180, because I have 5 sides. So I'm left with the measures of angles 6 through 10 being equal to the difference, or 2 times 180 degrees. And that difference is always going to be 2 times 180 degrees, because in this case, <clears throat> I have omitted 2 of the 180 degree angles, so to speak, from the equation. So I'm always going to be left with 360 degrees as a measure of the sum of the exterior angles in a polygon. Okay, theorem 57, or whatever theorem it might be, the number of diagonals that can be drawn in a polygon of n sides is given by the formula diagonals, or number of diagonals, d, is equal to the number of sides times the number of sides minus 3 divided by 2. So let's talk about why that's the case. All right, so the number of diagonals I can count in a square. I have one diagonal for each vertex, and I have four vertices, and the number of vertices is equal to the number of sides. 
right? So I have one vertex for each side. I have four sides, so four vertices. I have <clears throat> four diagonals then that I'm counting. I have one here. And let's do this in red. I have one from that uh, vertex, two, then three going back in the other direction, and then four. So if I count the number of diagonals per vertex, multiply it by the number of vertices, then I have the number of diagonals, but as you can see, I've double counted each of the vertices. This, I'm sorry, each of the diagonals, this vertex, I'm sorry, this diagonal is the same as this diagonal. So from A to B, that diagonal is the same from B to A, but I've counted it twice. All right, so the first thing I did was identify the number of sides. Then I identify the number of vertices. The number of vertices is the same as the number of sides. And then I identify the number of diagonals per vertex. In this case, it's just one for a square. And then <clears throat> I multiplied that, the number of diagonals per vertex times the number of vertices, and then I divided by two. And that's how I get the number of diagonals per uh, polygon. All right, so let's talk about uh, my pentagon here. In this case, I go from having a four-sided figure to a five-sided figure. And as I go from a four-sided figure to a five-sided figure, I go from having really one diagonal to having two diagonals per vertex. All right, so this is, I'm going to say, diagonals D per vertex. In my triangle, I have zero. In my uh, four-sided figure, I have one. My five-sided figure, I have two. So you can see the difference between the number of vertices and the number of diagonals is going to end up being three. So that corresponds to this portion of the equation. So the number of diagonals per vertex times the number, really, of vertices divided by two gives me the number of diagonals. Okay, so here's your formula. Di diagonals equal number of sides times the number of sides minus three over two, or really the number of vertices times the number of diagonals per vertex divided by two. So I can write this as the number of vertices times the number of vertices, I'm sorry, diagonals per vertex all divided by two. So if I multiply vertices times diagonals per vertex, I get the number of diagonals. So vertices be common between the two, they'd reduce to one. I'd have the number of diagonals. And remember, because I'm double counting them, I have to divide by two. So that gives me the number of diagonals in a polygon. Okay, so let's test your knowledge of some of the information that I gave to you. As, uh, so question number one, we're going to say always, sometimes, or never. So tell whether this, each statement is true always, sometimes, or never. As the number of sides of a polygon increases, the number of exterior angles increases. That's true. I have increased number of interior angles. So I'm going to increase the number of exterior angles as well. That's always going to be true. Number two, as the number of sides of a polygon increases, the sum of the measures of the exterior angles increases. Hmm. Well, no, that's not true because remember the sum of the measures of the exterior angles is equal to 360 degrees. So it doesn't matter if the sides increase. The measure of the exterior angles is always going to be equal to 360 degrees. Number three, the sum of the lengths of the diagonals of a polygon is greater than the parameter of the polygon. Well, you got to think about this one for a little bit and uh, think about what your answer is going to be. I think initially my answer would say, yes, it's true. But I can think of a case where it's not true, so it's going to be sometimes. So let's take a look at where it's not the case. So if I have a square, um, all four sides are going to be 4. So the parameter is 16. The sum of the diagonals, I know that I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle here. So each of the diagonals is 4 root 2. So the length of the sum of the diagonals is going to be 8 root 2, and that's going to be less than the perimeter. Now, if I take a hexagon, and I've worked this out for you, I have the sum of the measures of the diagonals is equal to 36 plus 36 root 3, um, given that the side length is going to be 6. All right, so in this case, and I have a regular uh, hexagon here. So in my regular hexagon, I found that the parameter is 36. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 sides, all with a side length of 6, 36 units. And in that same polygon, the diagonal is like 36 plus 36 root 3. You can see that 
the parameter in this case is going to be actually less than the diagonal. So sometimes is going to be your answer. All right, moving on. The sum of the measures of a polygon formed by joining consecutive midpoints of a polygon side is equal to the sum of the measures of the angles of the original polygon. The sum of the measures of the polygon formed by joining consecutive midpoints of a polygon side is equal to the sum of the measures of the angles of the original polygon. And the answer to that question is... The answer to that question is always. It's always going to be the case because the sum of the measures of a polygon with five sides, which is the exterior polygon in this case. So let's just mark this up in red, my exterior polygon has five sides and my interior polygon also has five sides. So the sum of the measure of the interior angles of both of these polygons is going to be exactly the same. All right, that's it for this edition of Otten Math. Come back and join us for some practice problems in Chapter 7.3 in just a moment.